Raleigh, North Carolina. I work with Cisco and I'm in sales enablement with a focus on digital platforms. I have been creating content pretty much my entire career, which now spans over 42 years in telecom. And uh, basically, I've done everything from service description documents to installation manuals, and now I have a focus on sales proposals and uh, own the sales proposal team. So we're gonna to talk today a little bit about a solution that um, Jackson and the Stilo team, along with Cisco, pulled together uh, back in 2021. And it had to do with how we could automate those and make them hyper-personalized. So that's what the focus of this session is on. And we're looking forward to, it, uh, to uh, sharing all that with you. Um, just a little background on myself. I, I'm a husband, a father, a grandfather. <laughs> I'm so proud of this little seven-year-old grandchild now. And um, actually, um, my passion is music and electronics. I originally played the Led Zeppelin because I really like, um, I play in a Led Zeppelin tribute band, so I'm, I'm originally a musician, and I uh, had, a, had that need for electronics in order to keep everything working, the amplifiers, the sound, and all that good stuff. So that's how I ended up in telecom eventually. Um, but yeah, I, both of the companies that I worked for were, were major disruptors in their industries. So um, uh, with Nortel, basically we took what used to be a bunch of relays and uh, step switches, and if you remember, when you made a uh, dial a telephone call, you got all those clicks to the other end. Those were step switches. Uh, what Nortel brought to the table was a whole digital platform, which is allowed us to introduce features like call waiting, call forwarding, uh, touch tone dialing, voicemail, all that good stuff uh, was evolved from that digital platform that we introduced. Um, with Cisco, again, not necessarily as much a disruptor, but an innovator, they brought to the table the ability to communicate with our little brand new desktop computers that we all were starting to uh, show up on our desks. Like, I had a Macintosh, which is, uh, I don't know if everyone knows that a Macintosh is actually an apple. So that's the name of, a, of an apple uh, that you get from the orchard. But anyway, the Macintosh computer, uh, they, uh, one of the Stanford professors wanted to be able to communicate with his wife in other buildings around the campus, and actually he created the first email system using a router that he built. I mean, that was the beginning of Cisco, the routing, the switching, and all that still remains today as our, as our stronghold in the industry. We are a security, heavy security provider now as well, and my last plug on, on where I worked, uh, Cisco just won for the third year in a row the number one place for employees to work in the country three years running, and a lot of that has to do with um, our mission is to become, an to provide inclusivity for all people, and with that, we do that through communications. And just a quick fun fact, 70% of the world's population will be connected wirelessly by the end of this year. So that is, that is a, a heck of a, uh, a lot of uh, ma ma a major milestone that we've accomplished just in, in the recent years. So I want to give Jackson a, a chance to introduce himself. Jackson Klein, Stilo. Okay, well, I, like, how can I do that after you? But I'll try. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, so my name is Jackson. I, I am actually new to this industry. This is the second time I'm attending Convex. First time was last, last year. Um, <clears throat> it's first time presenting here, so be, be gentle. Um, and um, I, I joined Stilo to work with Brian, our CEO, and uh, I felt like uh, you know I came from the telecom industry. I was working with you know silicon photonics. That that is a thing. Optical circuits, uh, modeling that, and, and only those products. But by only those products, um, uh, you know, the software engineering background. You also have to own, own the documents, you have to own the knowledge base. So I work with technical writers, I work with subject matter experts. At a certain point, I was one of them. Again, <laughs> don't hold that against me. Um, <laughs> and um, uh, you know, I was using FrameMaker when I had to, you know, help a manual. So working with documentation and, and with the background in software engineering, reuse is a big deal. Reuse and technical depth. That's all you care about. And when I learned Gita, that, that's it. You got uh, you got reuse. You got uh, waste of my technical debt. So it's just it's perfection. So when I joined the company to work with Brian, which is kind of walk away from my previous life, um, I felt like uh, you know a child on a, on a toy store. And actually, February we, we bought the toy store. And now you know I own the nice. toys. Um, uh, so um, I'll make sure I don't break them. That that's that's. <laughs> um, and. Uh, um, originally, I was not supposed to be here doing this presentation. I'm, I'm happy to be here. Um, and what we did actually is a small part in a large puzzle, a little piece of a large puzzle that uh, Cisco had the vision. And we tried, you know, in the process to 
I hope you realize that. Small but very important part. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you, Jackson. All right, so we're just going to talk real quick about kind of what's going on in marketing these days and um, you know what drives purchase decisions. And this is easy for all of us because we're all consumers. So just kind of think about what the last major purchases that you 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 made. A lot for a lot of us, it might be your home. Uh, I bought all these things over here at one point in time in my life, and uh, I can tell you that I did not buy the car and the motorcycle to get from point A to point B, which most people buy uh, automobiles and motorcycles to do. And then the supercomputer, I think I got that for my stepson, but it allowed him uh, you know, to have the latest and greatest on his desk. And then I never really needed a, a, a bunch of compressed air in a can in my garage, but I wanted to go ahead and get one because I knew the value I could get from, from having that and those tools that go along with them. <laughs> so um, I don't know if, uh, okay, there we go. So basically what, I, what the point I want to make is that we're not buying products anymore. We're buying experiences and we're buying the value that we can see from those purchases. And if you, if you kind of take a look at it, I've, I've outlined you know, what you get from each one of those. It's not necessarily point A to point B. Um, I, I like the Harley example because they sell freedom and they sell the ability to get out on the open road on a loud, powerful machine and escape reality, right? And it, you uh, will find that they charge a great deal of money to do that. <laughs> um, but uh, same thing with the Corvette or you know, any, any um, high-speed, thrilling, uh, great driving experience, high performance, uh, you get a lot of heads turning your way and that sort of thing. So it's, uh, you, you're selling that. And, and we, we as, as sellers at Cisco, we said to ourselves, well, how do we meet our customers you know, where that value they'll see and they don't just see the product? Because as soon as you start comparing products, they immediately go to the price, right? That's just what we all do as well as consumers. You're gonna go straight to the price and start to back up from there and find out, hey, what is the value of the product that you're purchasing and what are the features? And, and that's how we all used to sell. We all used to say, this is my product. These are the features of my product and this is the price. We very rarely ever got to uh, talk about, hey, how is this product going to impact you in your, in your daily lives or at your business? So what we ended up doing now is um, we, we, we worked to really hard to figure a way that we can make the pitch or the proposal that we give to our customers to be more meaningful and do that on a grand scale. So I used to do it. I told you uh, when I introduced myself, I used to create sales proposals. Um, I did it manually using Microsoft Word, but kind of my, my niche was that I wanted them to be very specific to a given customer in their industry with images that depicted their lives and their daily work lives and where they were, if it was a hospital or a bank or a, a minefield, wherever it might be, um, a mining field. <laughs> 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 but, um, uh, yeah, so, so what, we, what we set out to do was create custom sales proposals at scale, tailored specifically to our customers and include a solution level um, uh, proposals versus just single product. So uh, you can see I, I included the Amazon logo down there just because so many of us have that on a daily basis as a, as a consumption and a marketing model that we deal with every day. And you kind of know that Amazon knows when your running shoes are wearing out because <laughs> they pitch you a new pair. They kind of keep track of all that and they know that you're uh, into certain sports or into, um, you know, it, maybe it might be um, upgrading things in your home, remodeling, that sort of thing, and you keep getting those products pitched to you. So uh, what we wanted to do was figure out, hey, how can we do that at scale? So just step back real quick what we had. This is what we had before we are going to show you what we have now. But we had a, a library of 300 sales proposals. They were very generic, and they actually had yellow highlighting where the account manager or the salesperson had to put in the account name and also if we were selling through a partner, they had to put in the partner name manually. Um, now it's easy through a find and replace, so that's not really the point, but they did have to do that. But what they are is they're single product focused, so there's only one product in there. If you want to sell two products together, the account manager had to bash those together in Microsoft Word themselves. They're also very generic from a industry standpoint. They're um, always gonna just say, you know, your business or your locations or your users, they're not gonna spell out anything to do with the particular types of users that we're talking about. So that's where we were. And uh, one size fits most, right? I, I don't think so. 
Um, so basically, um, we said there must be a better way. Actually, my boss said there has to be a better way because we, we're a large company. We propose you know, probably 50,000 proposals a quarter. So it's, it's huge worldwide and um, I couldn't keep up with that. There's no way, right? I was, we, my, my team, we were doing about 300 a, a year. So, um, and nowhere near what we needed to be doing. So we said, let's get a fully automated custom proposal that generator that's linked to our CRM, which is Salesforce, is able to support multi-products is industry tailored and available to sellers in minutes. And I'll add a little more to that because we've evolved since then. And we started building in that business value I talked about so that if we're pitching to a healthcare agency, we're talking about the things that matter to them, like HIPAA, like remote patient visitations, remote uh, patient consultations, uh, all the good stuff that's available now through telehealth. So I'm just gonna show a quick video that I created for our sales convention a year ago. Uh, a little bit of it's outdated because we are now combining up to five products and we have uh, already pitched over 20,000 proposals through this. So it's come a long way, but I'll play the video and then we'll have a recap. SPG automatically captures your deal information from Salesforce, meaning proposal creation takes just a few clicks. The proposals include 13 industries through custom text and imagery. You can merge up to three products, meaning bigger deals and cross-architecture solutions. And the best part, your proposal arrives to you in just a few minutes. We'll begin our SPG demo at an example opportunity in Salesforce Main. I'll first ensure the industry field is populated to take advantage of the custom text and images that SPG provides. To begin creating our proposal, I'll click the Custom Proposal button at the top right. Upon arriving at SPG, you will see that all of our deal information was captured and auto-populated into the request form. If you want to add a partner, simply toggle the seller type to Cisco Partner. I suggest changing the all uppercase account name to Mixed Case for Aesthetics. You can also change the proposal type to executive summary if you need a lighter version with more high level content for a BDM audience. I'm going to insert my email so I will receive the proposal. To pick our products, I can scroll through the drop down menu and select up to three, or I can simply type a few letters of the product name and I'll be provided applicable choices. For this demo, we'll select Cisco WebEx and Cisco Duo. The title is auto-populated with the product names, but you can modify it or shorten it if you want. Now that I've completed our proposal request, I'll select Create Proposal. You now arrive at your very own My Proposal Request page, which provides a history of your requests. A welcome window lets you know you will soon receive your proposal via email and also provides the email address of our SPG support team. You can close this window. The status indicator for the proposal we just requested is showing in progress, but it will soon update to success and the proposal will arrive to my email inbox. Three minutes later, our request is indicating success and our proposal has arrived. Open the attached Microsoft Word proposal and review the document. On the title page, double check the spelling of your customer and partner names. If needed, update your disclaimer to include any relevant contractual requirements. A custom active table of contents is provided which can be used to navigate the proposal if desired. An industry related banner image is provided on the first page and for multi-product proposals an introduction is provided that explains the proposal is a solution offer. A good balance of text and imagery has been provided along with industry related content. Note that the content for your product selections has been merged throughout the document to flow seamlessly. New case studies and testimonials have been developed which provide images to accentuate this critical messaging. If you need to modify your request, for example with a new date or change the product selections, simply click on the pen icon on the left at your request page to make your revisions and resubmit your request.
I want to share a page from an example SPG proposal which demonstrates the custom deal and industry aspects that SPG automatically provides for you. The deal information captured from Salesforce is highlighted in blue, and user and location industry text, in this case healthcare, is highlighted in green. Our partner's name is included throughout the document and also on every page in the footer. Of course, the highlighting is only for this demo. Your proposal will not include highlights. SPG is available to sellers and partners at no cost. You can access it from anywhere at any time. For partners or non-Salesforce main sellers, you can access SPG directly by typing spg.cisco.com into your browser. SPG includes the latest Cisco products and solutions with constantly refreshed, fully branded content. All and right, so you've got an idea there how we did this. Um, we're going to talk about how we, what's behind the curtain, but you can kind of see where there's the request form. Um, the idea with the request form is completely filled in via a REST API that we've connected between um, our single page application within AEM back to the um, a Salesforce main uh, content. So we pull that in automatically at the request form level, and then the only thing that the seller has to do is pick the products. Now the products, there's up to uh, 150 in there now. Uh, we have all the architectures covered from enterprise networking to cloud networking to security, uh, service provider, we have it all, all in there, all the, the key Cisco products and, and uh, the higher level, obviously we have lots more products than that, but we've got all the product groups covered. Uh, that's also maintained every six months by a technical writing team of five. So they're able to do, uh, each one of them is able to do, um, you know, about 30 a quarter, so they keep them up at, updated every six months. <clears throat> uh, additionally, we're, um, uh, what we did, how, how we did the part of, on the proposal side, then I'm going to turn it over to Jackson with Stilo to talk about how we migrated the content. It was the first thing we had to do was take the existing single product generic proposals and we had to go in there and build in lots of places where we wanted to do insertions and conditional text. And also the, and pull in the uh, related images for the 13 industries. And if you can think about just a, a, a healthcare Example like I showed a minute ago. So uh, we when we talk about the users in healthcare, you're going to have uh, doctors, patients, and nurses primarily. But then uh, you'll also have you know visitors and urgent care workers and surgeons and that sort of thing. So what we did with the user types is, is we went in there and we never used the same user types twice uh, or on the same page. So it ended up not looking like it was you know just a cut and paste of uh, it's actually thought through so that it doesn't look like we cut and paste. And the same thing for location types in healthcare, you're gonna have hospitals and, and uh, medical facilities and urgent care facilities. We did the same thing whenever we talk about locations and how the solutions play at those locations, we, we use those specific names. Now, what we had to do is we had to do that in each of those locations in the proposals for 13, uh, because they have 13 total industries. So it was, a, it was a heck of a lot of work to do all that and then we also, uh, that was enough for the, for the user types and also the locations. But we also had to do it for the partner. So if we want to have a partner sales document, and most of, uh, about 85% of Cisco sales happen through partners that we work with closely. And many, some of you, Dan, you may know that. But uh, basically what we do is, um, is we allow the partners to sell our products for us and we enable them to do that. So we give them this, this tool as well. But we don't want them to have a Cisco sales proposal. We want them to have a WWT or a NTT sales proposal. So we allow them to put their name in it. And then we also have to give them setup text, which says, you know, WWT is pleased to offer a Cisco WebEx or whatever it might be. So that's another condition that if it's a partner document, all that text gets added in there, all throughout the document in the headers and footers and happens all, all automatically utilizing data. Um, additionally, um, the, the case studies and testimonials are linked by, um, by the, uh, the industry as well. So, you know, we're not giving an example of a, uh, something that we did for a petroleum customer to a hospital. So we want those to land because the, actually we feel like the case study and testimonial content is some of the most uh, used information for executives. They want to really see who else is using this product in my industry and how did it benefit them. So we feel like that, that's, uh, that's truly important. 
So what, what we use Stilo for is we have all these Word documents now with all these conditions and insertions and, and you know, options that we wanted to have for the industries and all that. And um, we talked with, with Brian and, and, uh, and I'm sorry, uh, uh, Helen at the time, and we talked with both of them, and they said, yeah, we can do that using DITA. And so what we did was we worked with our IT team and um, basically um, built a template in Word that would then be able to be put into the migrate tool. And uh, when it came out the other end, it would, it would include all the stuff that we needed to include in there. Um, and I just mentioned Helen at the very bottom there. Uh, she had a I can do that attitude and it was an amazing help to this project. So Jackson, you want to take it from there? Excellent. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, so how are we able to, to you know, help uh, uh, Cisco in this case to bring their vision to reality as far as within the scope of the, the migration? Well, we use, uh, we use still migrate. Now, uh, again, I mentioned before uh, my, my background is software engineering, so we love requirements, um, and we got away those requirements in a high level, as you've seen, you've seen in the previous slide. We have the templates, which is basically the content, the source content, the, the input documents. And uh, so why this is important? Because uh, migrate is all about rules, about defining rules, about bending rules, but that's also important. So if you look at a document, when you import that into the system, um, we extract all the paragraphs, all the text that there is, uh, and paragraphs can be breaking into different spans. But, but, but the beauty is, we also import every single uh, property of that paragraph. For example, you know, is it, uh, it's, what's the style, what's the font size, what's the color, uh, what, what happened before, what happened after that paragraph or that, that, that text. So you are then are able to map that paragraph, that text, to a particular data element. So there's two stages, right? You define your rules, and then you define uh, your target. Um, when, when that is done, when, when, when the rules are all defined, then we just hand the tool back to Cisco, and they could do this on their own. So the rules are not scripting, it's not programming, it's really, it's really like a fancy if statement. It's almost like natural language. You just describe, you know, if I find this, uh, you, you basically do that. And I'm gonna show a few examples. Um, now, if you look at a different industry, like, like pharma, for example, I can show you two documents that look exactly the same. Actually, let's assume that the content is the same. And um, you can print them, and you want to be able to distinguish what they are. But when you go there into the original source and you click on a title, one of them you're gonna see title one. Beautiful, if it's title one, uh, please make you know, topic one. And then you click the other document, and the author just set everything to normal. Every single, <laughs> everywhere is normal. So there's no proper formatting. So what they changed was indentation, they made it bold, they use uppercase, they put a number at the beginning, they maybe have a, you know, a, a, a Roman numbers at the end. And um, so how do you do that then in this case? Well, by using the rules you can do the same thing, but instead of having a single test saying, you know, what's the, what's the style here, what's the font size, what's the color, what's the background, what text before, does it have a bullet point? So you can do all, this, all these rules and then you can do them back into your, to your Jita element. Um, okay, let me that? Oh, that's small. Um, so the first, uh, that, that, that's okay. So the first, uh, the first requirement that we had there was just basically, you know, uh, uh, topic reuse. Well, no brainer. That's what Jita shines. Um, and then we are supposed to then break the segments by topic. And um, the first test we, we did is to make sure that was the right uh, style. The documents were well formatted, so I'm, I'm not going to compare the, your work with the, with the pharma industry in this case, so they were well formatted. And then uh, we were able to test, for example, um, does it have angle brackets? You cannot have angle brackets because angle brackets were used for placeholders for the customer's name and, and, and email and so on, so we have to test, okay, it has the right uh, title, it doesn't have angle brackets, and uh, we want to extract the title so you can use it as a topic uh, name or you can use it as a, as a file name, it's going to be then uh, no place on your in your uh, Gita map, for example. So that was the first the first uh, step. And we can also check for content. So you have that paragraph. You can actually check for a string. And if you see solutions or benefit of case study, well, maybe that would be a topic two level um, in your document. So all of that was uh, done by using uh, uh, several rules. So I mentioned the angle bracket. So they were used for placeholders for customer name, seller's name, uh, email, date, whatever, whatever was required by, by Cisco. So what we had was just a, a single rule uh, based on Conrad's. Again, uh, 
think about software engineering, you get your variables there that you can replace with your own uh, text. And we test for the, 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 the foreground, foreground color, I think it's blue, uh, that's my assumption by looking at it. Um, the content have to match a particular uh, a regular expression that is the angle brackets, and the style was Cisco proposal title. So that you extract your key for the conref, and uh, you will place on your in your file. So the same ones you have different conrefs with different things. For example, again the, the customer name, the seller name, email, uh, and because Cisco has full access to the rules, they can have their own rules. So if they want to extend this to different placeholders, they can do that for themselves, or they can they can uh, use our support. Uh, this is the same for the partner uh, and for the, for the partner name. So there's a condition, and in this case, we didn't use regular expressions. We just use the, the, the you know, if the content starts with angle brackets, if the foreground color is this, if it ends with angle brackets, um, if there's no text preceding after or before, and basically again, you create another rule that allows uh, allows you to define uh, this uh, this uh, context based on the partner name. And finally, this is this is the fun one. Um, is when you have to go across different industries. So what Cisco proposed was like a table uh, with different colors, and every, every color applied to a different industry. And uh, basically, you, you just highlight the original template, and by using a rule that detected the proper style and the proper color, you can then find <coughs> the proper conditions to select for a particular industry when you are defining your 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 data elements. And um, if they want to extend to more industries, they can do that themselves. They can just go and add more, you know, more lines to this particular rule. Or again, they can just work with us. But the plan was to have this as a self-serve, a self-serve uh, a, a portal, and that's what they 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 they, they had. Um, and this process of facilitated this uh, which product proposals, which I think started with three, you mentioned, and now you have five. Correct. Yeah. So um, to be honest, we haven't done this. We just enable them. Because the document only comes to life on the last stage, right? That's when everything is assembled. We have all the topics, yeah. So, well, we, we, we give all the, the GTXML, but they are the ones that at the end, the, all the assembly of the final documents. Um, and I'll uh, pass the word back to you. All right. Thanks, Jax. You're welcome. I appreciate it. Yeah, so that's where the heavy lifting was, obviously, in creating all those user types and all those location types, and then spreading them throughout the documents so that it was, as it was a meaningful uh, interaction with the reader, in this case, the customer. So this is kind of like what's behind the curtain uh, from a technical standpoint, how we did this. So you can see uh, we've got the API at the top from Salesforce over to uh, the desktop or the mobile device that's being used to access the actual SPG platform that you saw. That particular page that you saw is a single page application based in AEM. So that's what we're interacting with and basically capturing that information and populating that, um, that single page application. Um, from there, we, we use a, a MongoDB uh, for the Mongo database for, uh, for accessing that information and, and pulling that content together. Because like, it's, like we did, what the structured authoring is we segmented the proposals into, into like, uh, like pieces. So we had in the front end, we had introduction. Then we went with the business value benefits. Uh, we talked about some of the advantages of uh, why Cisco type information for that given product. And then we went into the uh, case studies, testimonials, more details and then components. So each one of those pieces of the structure exist for those given products, but then we had to go about how do we combine these now into a meaningful way. So we had two options. One was we can present everything with product A, followed by everything with product B, followed by everything with product C, and we felt like that didn't really meet our needs because we could easily do that. Uh, this we wanted to make more difficult for IT. <laughs> I'm just joking. <laughs> you can imagine uh, the difficulty now to take those topics and begin to merge them in, in, into like, uh, like piece parts. So when you pick five proposals, and lots of people pick five uh, products when they're doing these, just I think just to try to break it, but <laughs> luckily the, the platform is, is amazingly um, uh, stable. It can handle it and it gets them done, and I mentioned in the video, it gets them done in two to three minutes and all this happens in, in that span of time as well as the delivery of the proposal. But um, basically we took each one of those five product piece parts 
and put them into logical uh, areas so it makes sense to the reader. If I only want to read about the case studies and testimonials, I can find them all in one place for all five products. So that's the way we ended up doing that. Um, we also um, used Kafka for the, uh, the first in first out queue. So you saw where the uh, proposal was in an in progress state and then it transformed over to success. If you can imagine, you know, maybe uh, 50 of these being all, you know, requested at one time, they're, they're, we needed to have that ability to, um, to queue those requests. Um, we used it an open toolkit for the rendering back to Microsoft Word after everything was pulled together. We do render these back to Word. Uh, that's in intentional because the uh, sellers want to be able to, to uh, actually modify the documents at the end. They might want to remove some of the you know, content or whatever they want to do. They have that capability via Word. Um, we do have a vision to uh, build a very similar platform to this using Microsoft Sites, I'm, I'm sorry, Salesforce Sites, where we can actually provide a, uh, a multimedia you know, website style proposal to given customers and they could only see that particular site themselves, nobody else could see that. So that's, that's our vision uh, going forward. But we do use um, AEM for the, for the bulk of what happens uh, in, in, the, in the secret sauce. But um, you'll see that uh, we also the, the, did a toolkit to a rendering and then back to, uh, we, we send these to the sellers via Outlook. So there is about a 20 meg uh, you know, cap on the size, but we find even five products, five of our largest products uh, are still coming in under 20 meg, normally around 15 meg. So that's about where they're at. So that's kind of uh, what's, what's behind it all. Um, I did want to just give a shout out to the team real quick. Um, my my ex-director Pete Stamos was the uh, the person that got behind this. It, it was kind of like an idea I had for a lot of years, and only uh, it took somebody to, to believe in it and, and take the the leap because uh, you know we have we were getting about ten thousand uses of those proposal library templates per quarter. So uh, to if you think about to to disrupt that and say, okay, instead we're gonna give them automated proposals was a bit of a, a stretch. So um, that, that was some great executive sponsorship there. Um, myself, I was the business architect, and then Karthik Ringasmi was our principal solution uh, director or, uh, of IT. So he, he made sure that all those people on the right over there were, were doing what needed to be done to get this thing to happen. Uh, over uh, here, Stilo, um, Brian Tipper, and obviously Jackson Klein and, and Helen, uh, was uh, amazing uh, specialist of the DITA portion of this particular um, uh, project, and we, um, we, we have nothing but great things to say about Helen. We do have some, some rather disturbing news um, about Helen. And you can see that this is uh, Helen's obituary. She was supposed to be here today with me. Uh, Jackson is here in her place, uh, but Helen um, passed away about 10 weeks ago. So. Yeah, I know she was a, a member of this community and was attended every one of these conferences. I spoke with Don this morning and she, was, she had just found out as well. So this is fairly, fairly recent news um, and uh, she was a, a key contributor. Never, never said can't do that, it was always the can do attitude. So, uh, and if you read on, you can find this uh, in our package that um, Helen had, uh, left behind her husband and her children and uh, a, lot, a legacy of, of uh, service to many areas. So if we could just have a quick moment of silence for Helen, we'd appreciate that. All right, thank you. Um, Helen will be missed. Um, so from a recap standpoint, we have um, uh, these fully custom sales proposals available. This platform is, is, is highly utilized via Cisco sellers as well as our partners. We uh, created over 20,000 of them to date. This got implemented in mid-2021, so we're, we're coming up on almost two years. So we're still getting the word out about this platform. It's hard to communicate to all of our partners, especially because they're all around the world and uh, you know as they find out about it they just start pounding it hard and, and we love that I get to see almost all of these that get created I don't I can't keep up with looking at all of them but if I see one I hadn't seen before some you know weird uh, combination or whatever I go and I look at it and see make, make sure everything's uh, populating as it should but you can imagine there's a, there's a, a heck of a, a mapping 
uh, legacy that goes into this. And instead of if, if uh, someone comes in and requests the same three products in the same order, we just go to that MongoDB and we grab that previous map. We don't rebuild it every time. Uh, but if uh, all new requests that haven't been seen before, we'll build those on the spot. It takes another you know, 30 seconds, but we save time by leveraging those maps that are already existing and save, uh, obviously, server space. Um, uh, I think at this point, we're at pretty much at the point of uh, taking questions. So if anyone has any questions, we're, we're open to Jackson and I uh, telling you what we know about it. We haven't already, but we'd be happy. Yeah, thank you. You know, great presentation, thank you. Um, from the from the financial perspective and the ROI, I mean, can you share, I mean, getting executive, it, it sounds great, but getting executive support is, of course, critical. Can you share, like, dollars, or you shared some time savings of course. from the ROI? Of course, so uh, I think um, from a subjective standpoint, the value in uh, the meeting our customers where they are in their industry was a, was a no-brainer uh, with regards to getting the money to fund this. We, we, we didn't build this uh, based upon a, a projected ROI, but we have seen okay. some since. But um, the project uh, was a $200,000 uh, price tag on this to make it happen. Uh, you saw there was a number of people involved. Most of those IT people are contractors that, you know, they come on board or they're already on board, but they have to be funded. So we, we funded the, those contractors. Um, uh, we also funded the steel of cost for the migrations. And uh, we currently continue to uh, partner with Stilo as we build new proposals and bring new products on board. We still use the Migrate tool uh, for that. Um, as far as the ROI, what we saw right out of the shoot, Dan, we went from 300 to 150 proposal templates. The way we were able to do that was we had pretty much emulated the entire library for our partners. And uh, they had the ones that said, you know, uh, insert your partner name here and we are pleased to offer Cisco's whatever, right? So all that setup text was all throughout those templates. And right off the bat, we said, well, we just automate those little strings of text, right? And we'll insert those if they select a partner. And um, that cut the library in half down to 150. So uh, that was two people that were then, you know, we didn't, we didn't get rid of any of our people. And I always say this as a person that sold many services. We're just going to allow you to redeploy those assets yeah. to somewhere that means more to your business than sticking in partner text, right? That's not what, really what we exist for. But um, that, and now what else we did then, is instead of maintaining the Word documents, we still keep that library of templates, because some people are sad on those. You know, some people just don't want to go, you know, leave whatever they are used to. So uh, we still keep those up, but instead of maintaining those Word documents, and this platform, what we do is we just maintain this platform and then we create the Word documents to put out there. And we just put in generic information for account name and partner name or whatever. And those still live out there, but we cut the, um, the um, again, with that, we cut the, um, the maintenance down considerably. So the team has shrunk over the course of, uh, you know, last two years, but it's still in place because one of the key um, uh, seller points about this is that these, these products are kept refreshed every six months. If you have a library or a tool like this, you know how easy it is for that thing to get outdated, and uh, we, we're not seeing that. Well, I hope that means. Great, thank you. Yeah. Any other questions? Yeah. yeah. I have one. Um, so did you get any pushback from from the people writing proposals and well, I want to do it this way, and how did you work through that? Yeah, so Rob's question was, did we get any pushback from the writers? Um, so we were blessed in a way that um, we were in a transformation because uh, Cisco offered early retirement, and a number of our writers were uh, at the age where they were ready to, um, you know, and, and their career. And so we were at a point where we were hiring new resources, and we actually uh, took an offshore model and hired a, a bunch of India writers. Um, and boy, were we, uh, we were elated with the, the level of service that they provided to us. Um, not only that, but the open-mindedness, you know, they were hired, uh, they were asked to give Microsoft Word, you know, examples of their work and, uh, and 
most all of them had higher educated degrees and you know, I was thinking that boy, they're going to be overqualified or whatever, but they totally embraced the whole idea of all the insertion and the optional text and the color coding and all that stuff that probably our writers, our old writers would have, you know, told me I'm crazy and, and not, uh, not embraced it. So I, I did hear in some of the other sessions that, you know, writers do push back, you know, and there's a disruption going on with the whole chat GPT now and whether you use it whether you don't use it and all that so um yeah we were just really lucky to have made that change at that point in time thanks rob mm. yeah so Mitch. so so first i want to say i think using the color coding is terribly clever it's really cool i think and um but you know what so in thinking about futures and and in, in some environments, you have kind of a long sales cycle, and, and it involves testing and, and installing and seeing what the results are and seeing what the ROI is. And, and generally, you can pull out the diag diagnostic data and then kind of, and, and I've seen sales people have to go through kind of processing that data and then turning that around into contents in this kind of proposal. And do you have any 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 plans to um, kind of do that sort of thing? Only automate that aspect of it. Get in, in, incorporate data that comes from the sales cycle. Um, yeah, that's a great question, Rich. Thanks. Um, I think um, what we're looking to evolve this to next, as I mentioned, is is going to be more of a platform that would potentially be able to do that better and access other information out there. Right now, the only information that we can pull into these proposals is what's already been converted from Word to DITA and, and uh, is available within the, the database. But what we want to do is we want to get into uh, a, a more of a, a, a website style where we can pull in, comp you know, we could easily pull in test results from us from a proof of concept or you know, whatever we want to pull in, if it's in a, if it's in an environment where it's conducive to that, where this particular platform was pretty much meant to make Word documents, you know, and uh, I don't know that if, if the results were a, a PDF or whatever, you know, we could probably embed the document, but that's not the greatest. So, yeah, what we really want to do is, is get, in, get this into the, to the next century and make these things websites, <laughs> you know, I think, I think that's the end game, yeah. All right, well, thank you so much, everyone. Um, it's been a pleasure meeting all of you and hanging out for the last two and a half days and uh, dinner, Julian, awesome last night, Brian, Monday night, thank you so much. Uh, we've had a wonderful time, Jackson and I, meeting each other and, uh, and in person, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> I don't even know if I ever met Brian in person, I don't believe so, but uh, yeah, we, we worked together on this and, and it's been a meaningful, exercise, but being here to share it with all of you has meant, meant quite a bit, so thank you very much, and appreciate your time. Thank you.